Morita. Mr. Pat Morita. Oh, yeah. Pat Morita, ladies and gentlemen. Lenny Bruce's mother named him the hip nip, but he hung on because now all of a sudden he had an angle. He would tend to do the same show over again. <laughs> and then he couldn't figure out why he wasn't getting laughs. I don't think he paid much attention to the rules of the game. You know, he kind of did what he wanted to do. He really embraced the things that many of us run away from. He, he ran to it. He had a lot of inner demons. He struggled a lot with depression and he was drinking too much. Thinking he was doing too much drugs. He was drinking so much that I went to the line producer and said, I'm scared to death he's going to fall off a cliff. And he was stumbling and, and he fell flat on his face. That was when it really, really hit home and he realized, I've got a big problem. Hello. Oh, Don. Hello. <laughs> oh. Hello. You're... All right, let me, let me see. I'll do this. And then maybe then if I do this, there we go. There you How's are, Don. Jeffrey? Yeah. I'm having a childhood, I'm geeking out right now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was eight years old when Happy Days started. Happy Days was my life. I'm sure you've heard this oh. from millions of fans over the years. But I am just wanted to say this is a oh, total wow. thrill. Not only talk to you about Pat Morita, but just like, you know, you don't understand how Happy Days was my life when I was a little kid. I mean, it was just. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah. That's great. You were eight years old when you started watching about, about that? Well, it, um, I'm Generation X, so I'm, I'm 54, you know, so. Okay. Uh, it just, yeah. uh, it was, it was a great, uh, Happy Days lunchbox. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, well, you're, you're 13. So we went on the air. So when we went on the air, you were about seven. Yeah. So, yeah, seven, eight. Yeah, that's about right. right. Yeah, yeah, so was, that's it. And I mean, I'm telling you, it was just the greatest. What a great era for television and all of that. Yeah. So thank you for joining me today. It's a total thrill. Where Where are you? I'm in Las Vegas. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Born and raised. Or, huh? <laughs> I'm born and raised in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. My family came here in the 50s. I'm the only one born here in Vegas. Uh, so I just spoke to Evelyn. So she's still here in Vegas. I know Pat was here for many years. And uh -huh. I never had a chance to meet him, but I was proud to know that, hey, you know, Pat Morita, you know, Miyagi lives in Las Vegas. You know, it was right. like, oh. uh, well, let's talk about Pat and your relationship with him. And uh, I was, like I said, I was a big fan of Happy Days, but I remember you never saw Arnold. So <laughs> how did that finally come about? Well, you know, it's funny because I, I was trying to remember this myself. And, um, you know, I was watching the documentary. Um, it, the first two years, we always talked about Arnold or the first season or two, we always talked about him, but you never saw him, like you said. And then um, I guess Gary Marshall decided, um, I can't remember what the impetus was, but that, hey, we should, we should meet Arnold, you know? And then they, um, and Gary had worked with Pat on another show, uh, cause you know, Pat had, was doing a lot of stand up comedy early on, that's how we, started doing stand-up comedy but then he started getting appearances on some you know guest starring roles on different tv shows and and then gary uh used him in a pilot uh with penny marshall but it didn't sell but then what happened was then gary thought of um pat i i don't know what you know what the catalyst was but he thought of pat to play arnold and they came up with you know the whole funny thing is well, how, if he's if he's Japanese, how does he have? Why is his name Arnold? And and there was a funny bit. He goes, you know, well, there was a sign there that said Arnold. And my last name's Taka Takashumi or something. You know how many letters in Takashumi? It'd be very expensive or something like that. <laughs> so how many, and how many Japanese men are in Milwaukee in the 1950s, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not a lot, but. Uh, <laughs> But but he he was great in the part. He was a he was a funny funny guy. But in in real life, he was he was very soft spoken. Very he was very soft, uh, gentle, really gentle soul. And although he had a lot of hardships growing uh, growing up, in the documentary is pretty powerful. Uh, you 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 learn things about Pat, and you go wow. How did, it seems so um, almost like contradictory or uh, in opposites in, in terms of what 
he he went through uh, growing up, and then this hu this funny you know this great sense of humor and and this innate ability in comedy, it, it's a real juxtaposition, and but then of course then he went on to do Karate Kid, and then you saw this completely different side of Pat and a whole other character. It was so so convincing and he made it so so real it was it was didn't seem like he was uh acting it seemed like he was that guy well you call him a gentle soul but i remember the episode the judo episode on happy days and he flipped you how many times did you <laughs> have to do that any injuries or <laughs> it's funny i just saw that recently i hadn't seen that in a long time and i forgot about it um i don't think we did it too many times i think probably what twice you know once we did it in um, kind of rehearsal, actually more than twice because we we had to do it in rehearsal, and then we had to dress, you know, to just make sure we we could get it right, and then there was a dress rehearsal where we shoot in front of the cameras, so we had to do it then, and then when we did in front of an audience, so probably three times. Um, no, I don't, you know, I think I came down. It was a good, pretty good thud, you know, you felt it, but uh, luckily no injuries. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it was very traumatic for me as a child because, you know, it, Arnold disappeared. You know, it's like, what happened to him? And, you know, later on in life, I remember watching Mr. T and Tina. I remember, oh, I don't remember anything about it, but I remember the title. I mean, that just it rings in your, you know, yeah. Mr. T and Tina, just the rhythm to it. But as a kid, I thought, you know, you know, who's Al? I mean, who's this guy coming in? You know, yeah. so I just remember being yeah. upset about that with my mom going. Yeah, disappointed. I can understand that. I mean, we were a little disappointed too, but you know, it seemed like a, a great opportunity for Pat. Uh, you know, the network, it was their idea to, to, to build the show around him because he, he was so good and, as, as Arnold. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it, the show didn't last. It did, probably only four or five episodes aired. It, 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 you know, it didn't go anywhere. Um, so I'm sure it was pretty disappointing for Pat because here he was on a show that was now reaching number one in the ratings. And, and then all of a sudden now he's out of out of a job. But um, you know, he persevered and and then you know it's real interesting when you watch the documentary, um, how he got the role of Miyagi. And um it wasn't easy. And it, it was very uh the odds were way against him. I won't give it away because people see it in the documentary, but it's 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 a testament to Pat how he got that role. And you know, as an actor, that actors can go through a lifetime without having something to be identified with or something that just goes beyond and it's a, it's a member of pop culture like Mr. Miyagi. You know, Happy Days is the same thing with you. I mean, I've been just, we're still talking about it 40 years later right. plus. Yeah, so um, but for him, uh, I always wondered if he embodied that character. I mean, he appreciated it because some actors don't want to be Miyagi their whole life, but it seemed right. like he, he embraced it. It seems like he was proud of that anywhere and with fans. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, you know, I, there were good amount of years where I didn't, you know, after Happy Days and he, when he did Karate Kid, I didn't really see Pat for, for you know, for many years. Um, but I did get that sense from seeing him in on some interviews and, and, and little, little bits here and there that, yeah, I, I was definitely proud of it and embraced it and was not trying to run from it because look what he created. That was so different than what he did on Happy Days. So he proved he had already proved the that he could do you know so many different kinds of characters. Well, uh, you just spoke to one of my best friends in the world of twenty years, Tony Toscano in Salt Lake. He's like, uh, oh, he he just spoke highly of you. And when we found out we were talking, he's like, I know Don. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so. Oh, he, oh, that, so He's in Salt Lake. Okay. I wasn't quite sure where he was. Right, right. Yeah. He, he's been a film critic for 40 years in Salt Lake. And I've been, uh, this is my 26th year in Las Vegas. And uh, so we were both excited to find out we were oh, talking great. today. So. Oh, well, thank you. That's, I feel uh, honored. Thank you very much. Well, Don, thank you so much for joining, to me, joining me today. If I can get my, my tongue tied here. <laughs> I'm starstruck, to tell you the truth. And oh. uh, what a great documentary and uh, great stories. And uh, when you have a chance, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Definitely. Um, yeah, my 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 wife and I we like to visit Las Vegas, and she likes to play poker. And uh, so we'll you know when things settle down a little bit, we'll 
we'll be there. I'll, we'll have to we'll have to meet up, have a drink or something. I would love that, Don. Thank you so much. Right. Stay safe, and we'll talk again soon. You too. Stay safe. Thank you.